the city mouse and the country mouse, an Aesop fable. The city mouse hadn't seen his country cousin in a long while, so he decided to pay a visit. Welcome, welcome, said the country mouse when his cousin arrived. How fine you look in your tailored suit. I do hope you pack something more comfortable, though. I'm afraid this barn that I live in gets dusty. Indeed, said the city mouse, brushing a piece of straw from his sleeve. How do you ever put up with all this dried grass? Well, I like my home just as it is, replied the country mouse. All this soft, warm straw makes it cozy. But you must be hungry after your trip. I prepared a special meal. Wonderful, said the city mouse. As a matter of fact, I am a bit hungry. The country mouse went to work setting the table. He brought out sunflower seeds, dandelion greens, an apple core, two walnut shells filled with fresh milk, and cornbread crumbs. He was especially proud of the cornbread crumbs because they were so hard to come by. He had had to sneak into the farmhouse and risk being smacked with a broom. He hated when that happened, but he wanted to impress his cousin with his fine food. The city mouse wasn't impressed. In fact, he didn't care for the meal at all. My poor cousin, said the city mouse, how can you live on such simple foods? You should come with me to the city. I'll show you what fine dining really is. Well, I, I admit that my diet is plain, said the country mouse, but I like it just the same. But the city mouse replied, you don't know what you're missing. The two mice sat and talked for a while, and then it was time for bed. The country mouse fell asleep right away. The city mouse tossed and turned. What's that noise? asked the city mouse, annoyed. Huh? What noise? replied the country mouse, yawning. That horrible screeching sound, said the city mouse. Can't you hear it? Oh, you mean the crickets. Well, they're just crickets. You get used to them. It's a soothing kind of sound, don't you think? Not me, replied the city mouse, but his cousin had already fallen back to sleep. The city mouse continued to toss and turn. When he finally dozed off, a rooster began to crow, announcing the arrival of morning. Rise and shine, cousin, said the country mouse. Are you ready for breakfast? cousin answered the city mouse this country living isn't to my liking i want to go back to the city as soon as i can why don't you come with me and see what it's like well i'd love that said the country mouse very excited so after breakfast the two set out for the city they arrived late in the afternoon the country mouse was impressed by the carpets and woodwork in his cousin's apartment. After resting a few minutes, they decided it was time for dinner. What would you like to eat? asked the city mouse. The city is full of fine restaurants. I know a good dumpster behind a seafood place, but you have to eat quickly because there's a, there's a lot of cats around. Or perhaps we can pick up something on the street. Sometimes children drop their ice cream cones or people toss away the ends of their hot dog buns. Oh, ice cream, uh, hot dog buns. I, I don't know what you're talking about, but it all sounds so wonderful. Let's go out and explore. It was rush hour when the mice reached the street. People filled the sidewalks, the traffic clogged the avenues. The mice darted between shoes, dashed around automobiles, and scurried along curbs. Isn't this exciting, said the city mouse. Well, I'm afraid I don't much care for it, replied the country mouse as he unstuck his leg from a wad of bubble gum on the sidewalk. It's dangerous, 
and it smells bad. What? said the city mouse, who couldn't hear over the noise from a passing bus. I, I want to go back to your apartment, said the country mouse. When the mice returned to the apartment, a party was going on. There was a table set up with all kinds of cakes, fruits, and cheeses. We're in luck, said the city mouse. As soon as the party's over, we'll feast on the leftovers. They hid for several hours until the last guest went home. Now's our chance, exclaimed the city mouse, and he and his cousin climbed up the tablecloth to explore the banquet. The country mouse was fascinated by a huge piece of chocolate cake. He especially enjoyed munching on the sugar frosting rose, and he even found the candle to be tasty. Next, he joined his cousin in devouring a bit of cheese. This, mm -mm, this really is a treat, he said between bites. All at once, the door swung open and a huge dog bounded into the dining room. It ran around the table barking and yelping and causing quite a fuss. The two mice barely made their way back to safety. Out of breath, and still shaking, the country mouse said to the city mouse, Cousin, you may enjoy the fine food and a fast pace of the city, but I'd rather have my simple meals in peace and quiet. And saying that, the country mouse went home. The moral of the story is, to each his own.